Do you remember a couple of weeks ago when I published this video? For me, this is a great opportunity to um, speak my mind, and it's on a, on a topic that I think is it's really important, important to me. Well, today I have something really cool that I want to show you guys. Now today's video is a sponsored post and it's a sponsored post because I'm so passionate about pet safety. You'll know after watching the vlog and certainly after seeing that video that after 20 years as a firefighter and a paramedic, it's really important to me. So that's why I'm going to show you something pretty cool today. Norm, hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So I want to introduce you guys to Norm Lacouvi, who's the owner of Brave Point Kennels and Canada's distributor of Vario Cage Kennels. So uh, Norm, can you talk to us a little bit today about your kennels that you sell? Sure, and thanks for the invitation to come in today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, we've, uh, we're, as, uh, as Ken said, we're the distributor in Canada for the Vario Cage product. Uh, this is a product that's been engineered, designed and manufactured in Sweden. It's a lovely looking product, but more importantly, it's a very safe product and pet safety is utmost in our minds. This is a product that's actually crash tested. When I say crash tested, it's the only crash tested product in the world that's crash tested for front, rear collisions as well as rollovers. It's tested in Sweden in the same types of facilities that they crash test cars. In fact, when they crash test these products, they actually do so with simulated humans in the vehicle to see if the cage will have any impact on the humans during a crash. Because the last thing we want to do is keep the dog safe which is great, only to impact and hurt or, or, or injure the humans that are in the car as well. So I think that's a really important point and it's something that I talked about in the videos is that uh, if you, a vehicle is involved in a collision, anything that isn't tied down is going to be moving inside that vehicle and when Norm mentions uh, you know, talking about the safety of the humans, that's equally as important when we're talking about a car crash. First thing I want to point out is if you'll notice in the back of this vehicle, this is a Dodge Caravan, and the, and the cage I have here is the double, Ferrier Cage Double Max, the largest one that's made. If you'll notice that the angle of the cage actually resembles the angle of the seat. And there's a reason for that. The first reason from the dog's perspective is that most dogs will be lying down, hopefully lying down during transport, and there's a little more room on the bottom than on the top. And that's nice for the dog. The most important reason is because of a crash, potential crash. If this cage is involved, this car is in a, in a crash and this cage moves up, then as you can see, because the angles are very similar, then the force that's distributed by this cage moving against that back seat, the, the force is distributed evenly across the back seat. There are cages that offer, we'll call them very, very strong steel made cages. This is steel as well, but I'll we'll talk about that in a moment in a more box-like manner. Imagine, if you will, if this was a steel square, not a not an angled rectangle, if this was a square and this point was where it hit in an accident, then all the energy and force of the vehicle coming uh, from behind or the, the cage moving forward is centered and focused on one point. That's a bad thing. That's potentially, in an accident at 50 kilometers an hour, a 4,000 pound vehicle that's upwards of 80,000 pounds of force. Imagine 80,000 pounds of force, or imagine the force of a straight steel cage, a rectangular cage, hitting the back here, because if that's where the person's head is, then this is where their neck and vertebrae are. You'll notice that there's knobs on the vehicle, on the, on the model cage, and I'll, and I'll talk about those later, but these three are important, and they're different color, they're red. In the event that this vehicle's in an accident and the back hatch is compromised and we can't get in the back, the dogs are protected in here and they're not going to run loose and we'll talk about that too but all I have to do is unscrew these three knobs and this back piece falls out. It's an emergency escape hatch for after the first responders have dealt with the humans in the in the vehicle if they wish to remove the um, safe animals, the animals that have survived, that's the way you would do it. You don't have to go up in the front. You can actually use this as an emergency escape hatch. And I thought that was really, really cool. It's one of the features that I thought was amazing about the Vario cages. Um, in my experience as a firefighter, there's been lots of instances where you can't get to a certain part of a vehicle. And, uh, you know, you just never know where that's going to be. So having a, an, an alternative means to uh, get your pet out is really important in my mind. So now, a few of you might be thinking, there's no way I can do the crate. You know, I can't fit it in my car, or it just doesn't work for me. And um, Norm's mentioned an, an, another option for you guys that just can't do the crate. Yeah, or if you have a third dog. So you might have something like this in the back of the end, that smaller dog or a third dog in the vehicle. There is an all-safe harness, which has been on the market probably now for about 20 years. Okay. Extremely safe um, unit, 
product that comes in four or five sizes, right down to something for a, a 10 pound or a nine pound dog up to the very large dogs. Perfect. And it incorporates your existing seat belt system in the back seats. Oh, that's a good idea. Right. Yeah. So the dog has full mobility. It goes on almost like a harness yep. for the dog. Um, and they're kept very, very safe. In yeah, that's it. and that's what's the, the most important thing. Now, we touched on it earlier a little bit about the crash uh, testing and the safety testing, and that is of the utmost importance. And that's really why um, I reached out to Norm, because uh, in our discussion, when I, when I first saw his product and I reached out to him, that was uh, you know, the thing he talked about uh, right away, and that's something that we talked about the most. I was so impressed with some of the testing and the level of testing that goes into these cages. So if you're considering a crate, and, and uh, certainly you need to be considering your pet's safety as you're traveling uh, in, in your vehicle. Uh, I, in my opinion, this is the way to go, these uh, Vero Cage kennels. I'm actually going to drop a link in the description below to the uh, to Norm's website so that you guys can check them out yourselves. So guess who has joined us here? Hello! Kale's here and she wanted to check out some of the kennels, but uh, and Norm was just going to show us uh, some of the features of the front, uh, uh, the doors of the kennel and the crumple zones. One of the things that sold me on actually, and my wife in particular on this product was that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you get to a show, and Gail does agility, as you teach agility and do agility, when Gail gets to a show, the first thing she does is she opens up the back of her hatch because the dogs need air, Absolutely. but then she locks the doors. Nice. And so she can walk away and go pick up her course map. Or if you're doing confirmation, you go pick up your number, etc. If you're really worried, you can actually put a padlock on as well. Actually, as you say this, I, I'm also thinking to myself, there's lots of times like after a show or whatever where we want to go for dinner or something and the like big panic is, oh my God, what are we going to do with the dogs? Right. Now you can park somewhere where you can see them, put the hatch up, open it, and then you can not have to stress at all. I'm smiling because that's my, that was going to be my I next slide. I love I'm not thinking that's about exactly. the trial. I'm thinking about like the this food is exactly, and the beer after exactly the trial. What we do. <laughs> When the, when the young lady at the front says, do you want to sit over here? Say, no, put me next to the window so I can see my car. Absolutely. And we do just this. <laughs> uh, very strong, all hydraulics wow. uh, to, to manage them. You just slam them, they're not going to break. A couple of interesting points, or one interesting point, is you'll notice that this bar is shorter than the rest. I did notice that. And there's a reason for that, in that in a vehicle, this is the crumple zone. Now you'll see a lot of cages, steel cages, that are square again. And back to my point in the fr uh, when we're looking at the back of the cage, the challenge is if we put a steel, solid steel cage with a point here, then we actually compromise the rollover mm -hmm. crumple zone capability of this of vehicle and other vehicles. And so in fact what this cage has is its own crumple zone. Huh. So once the vehicle has rolled, hopefully just, just the one time and everyone's fine, but if it, if it compromises this crumple zone space, then it will start to do, have its own or take, take, uh, make use of its own crumple capability as well. Huh. Great idea. All the all the cages are strapped in and tied down in four points. Um, customers often ask, should I put something stronger in than these thinner straps? There's no need. Uh, the reason is one, we want them to break away. Uh, number two is these load hooks would break away before anyways, the strap, yeah. anyways. Absolutely. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. You just want to keep this thing from moving around Slide in the car up. while you're while you're while you're driving, and you also want it to be in the right position for an impact. Right. You don't want it to be sideways during an impact. You want it to be just like it is now. Huh. They're all made of steel and powder coated so they won't rust. But what's interesting about this is that the steel is malleable in that it isn't tubular steel that's not forgiving. Mm -hmm. You want it to be forgiving so that the dog has a chance. And all of the cages are extendable, whether it's there's six versions or six sizes of the double, uh, double cage. Mm -hmm. There's five sizes of the single cage and there's even four smaller cages. But they're all extendable by just by moving those or undoing those black knobs. Cool. You can stretch them out and bring them back depending I was on the size of your dog. I was dog. looking at this here and thinking, I feel like that goes out and in. It does. Cool. So a couple of reasons why you do it. If you had a small dog now, you don't want a lot of space. No. Because the dog would be shot three feet to the end Five, of the cage in an absolutely. accident. But as the dog grows, you can extend it. Another good idea why your crate should be properly sized. Absolutely. Not just because we talk about that for house training often, but yeah. um, another reference would be the car for sure. Absolutely. The other reason why they're extendable is because there's such a variety of cars. Mm -hmm. And we have we have one that will fit in, or, uh, we have a device that will fit in any vehicles on the market today. Uh, and also what happens in a crash is that's actually compressing first as well and it'll get to the end, which will still leave about this big a cage inside. Mm -hmm. So would the dog be kind of like this a bit for a second? Sure, but the Water. dog's alive, which yeah, is what we really want. Absolutely. Because what we have, one of the biggest challenges, and we talk about that with 
you know, every summer we talk about how people are leaving dogs in cars and mm -hmm. they're they're dying, and that's a tragedy. And we have a lot of education on that, but we don't have any education on restraining your dogs in cars, yeah. which is super important. Yeah. Because one of the biggest challenges, you, you know, with Ken being a, a first responder, is that dogs, if they survive in a car crash in any cage, other than this one, they're generally loose in the vehicle. So the first responder comes to comes to the car, needs to address and treat mm -hmm. the human, often breaking open the doors, the dog bails. Yeah, the dog's absolutely. either lost or killed on the highway. I know way too and many stories of that happening. And that happens far more often than dogs overheating in a car. Absolutely. So we need to spend some time on education on that. Currently um, in the United States, nine of the 51 states um, have legislation that dogs need to be restrained in vehicles. Really? That's good to know. That's I really have great. I no idea yeah. about yeah. that. We don't have that in Canada uh, yet, to my knowledge. In Ontario, there's three things that police can do. I think it's section, and correct me if I'm wrong, sections 162, which is crowded uh, driver, mm -hmm. section 130, which is careless driving, and of course our new distracted driving act right. law, which is you know mostly around cell phones mm -hmm. and texting, but it's really distracted by anything. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you see people driving with like their little Bichon like on their lap or up over their shoulder. Incredible, <laughs> yeah, not incredible. Be safe for the person. So it's unsafe. Also so dangerous for the dog. Yeah. Like yeah. it just when you drive around and you see like the car, the dogs loose in the back of the truck. Right. Ken knows I yeah. go ballistic yeah. in the car because it just makes me so angry and so sad yeah. that, that people would put their dog at risk like that. Yeah, I think we need to spend more time on education of mm -hmm. the consumers of the drivers because even though the police may have the ability to enforce certain things like the distracted driver or a crowded, yeah. dri crowded driver, it doesn't have the same effect on the average consumer, the yeah. average person who's driving not the way when we have all the campaigns about don't leave your car don't leave your dog in your in your car in the yeah. summertime with the windows up yeah i yeah. that i uh, i would like to ask you about what this uh fancy dancy thing is it is a fancy dancy thing um serves two purposes this is a brand new product from the company mim out of sweden the first one is to protect your bumper excellent while you can paint your car when you get scratches it's really hard. You can't really paint the and bumper. Just the dirt alone, as well. Exactly. But more importantly, this new one um, is such that you can actually, in the wintertime, you can actually bring this right up and help protect Attach from the it. elements. Nice. Yeah. Works well. And provides a dog with some privacy. Absolutely. I was thinking the same thing, especially if you're in a busy place and you don't want people sticking your, their hands in your, your crate doors or walking too close. Or like you when a, you're at the restaurant. You know, like when you're at the restaurant and having your, your nice meal. Absolutely. After the event. Yeah. After, after the, the successful event. event. Or maybe halfway through the event. Who knows? Yeah, it depends but, uh, how your day's yeah, going. No, I like depends that. Depends how the day's going. Yeah. So I want to thank Norm from Brave Point Kennels for, for coming out today. As I said, I'm going to drop a link to his website in the description below. So definitely check that out. And as you know uh, by now, uh, you know, keeping your pet safe is so important in my mind, especially when you're transporting them in a vehicle. There are family members and, um, you know, you wouldn't let one of your kids wander around the backseat of your vehicle uh, as you're traveling. I don't know why people do it with their dogs. And those kennels are really cool. Eh? Like so cool. Yeah, there's all sorts of great features that I hadn't even thought about when I'm just sort of thinking about their safety, but uh, all sort of all kinds of niceties uh, in those crates that uh, would make them a lot easier to use, especially for like an agility handler. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of fabulous things and different size options, and you know, one big section versus individual sections. It really um, allows people to have a ton of options depending on what size a vehicle they have and what uh, types of dogs, breeds of dogs, and also the number of dogs. Yes, which absolutely. Which can vary sometimes yeah uh, if you, especially if you people. have seven <laughs> so if this is your first time with us make sure you hit that subscribe button we publish new videos every monday wednesday and friday to help you do something awesome with your dog next to me is a video that youtube will think you want to watch next on that note happy training